All right, everyone, we're about to take an e-bike into the largest city in the world here, Chongqing, China. But before we go, I have to charge this bike up. Let me show you how I do it. And I will actually drag it into the, the shop here and charge it up. And they plug it in and they charge you about, uh, it's about five RMB, so about 80 cents per charge. And I need two charges per month. And this is the little gadget that charges it here. And the good news is the bike's ready to go. We're gonna jump on it. We're gonna head into the city. Some precautionary measures are ahead with these cool extendable visors on the side. A helmet is a must. This bike is really cool. It costs a whopping, I don't know, three bucks a month to operate. I put hundreds of kilometers on this thing. Here's the advantage of the bike now. Normally, this is traffic going right smack into downtown. If you have a little bit of skill, you can maneuver quite well. Lots of cars. The infrastructure is really, I think, really well done. I know you're gonna say, wow, you're in the middle of a, a traffic jam, Alex, but mm, you know what? For most part, the city gets its people around. There's lots of alternatives for transportation. You can see this is one of the 14,000 bridges in Chongqing here. This is a beautiful one too. And to my left and right is the rivers. And there are two rivers here, the Jialing and the Yangtze River. So a lot of these uh, green license plates are e-cars. And you see there's already people in the bridge. They're setting up little shops. This bridge in two hours or three hours time will be packed with pedestrians because they all come down here to look at all of this beautiful skyline here. This is Yuzong District is where we're uh, going right now. We're coming from Jiangbei. And a lot of people probably wonder why we drive the bike. I mean, even in the winter when it's cold, even in we'll summer back. when it feels like it's 45 out, I still prefer the bike because I hate traffic and I hate wasting time sitting in traffic. And now you can you can hear we're in the downtown area. You can hear the horns honking. You know, something that I don't think people realize, you know, look at how green the downtown area is with the trees. But also I feel like only on a bike you get to, you know, feel the city and explore the city. It's almost like walking, but faster, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's almost like cycling, but easier. Mm. So it's really, if you can and you feel confident uh, to drive. So how much does a bike cost? That's a good question. I have two e-bikes here in Chongqing. One is a smaller spec bike, and that cost me about $350 brand new. This one that we're on here is about 800 US dollars brand new. It's got the biggest battery for the city. We're on one of these cobblestone streets again here. You can see, oh, actually I'll drive it down the center follow a lot of these delivery guys. Some beautiful buildings down here as well. We do like this old, this area. This is one of our favorite restaurants here. Yeah. You saw the guy that was driving with me, he just parked over there. No problem. Parking is free. Parking and, is free. And plentiful. Yeah. It's on every corner. You can literally park even on the sidewalk and uh, I'd say 90% you'll be uh, safe. Yeah, and you won't, won't have to worry about getting robbed, stolen, or anything like that. And another thing that I like about this is, is this area gets so busy here on a 
well, I would say every night. This is a this is a Wednesday right now, four in the afternoon. This is a, a major roundabout, and the city center city center is there. You can see all these skyscrapers here. In this area, uh, it's quite popular for shopping, but there are other areas here that you can do some discount shopping. I would say every major brand down there. And the the Liberation Square. This is one of my favorite buildings, actually. At night, it looks amazing. This is the Botai. Is that is this the Botai Art Center? Art Center, yeah. We're gonna go see what we can find for shopping. And a battery on this should last us. Um, I would say just regular, normal, everyday driving about two weeks before it needs charged up. And as I said, five RMB is usually the price, about eighty cents to a dollar every time I charge it. We're gonna try to get to Raffle City. I'm not sure how to get to it from here, but I'll try. And you'll see a lot of people, they do use public transit. And they protect themselves from the sun. Do you see raffles? <laughs> I think we go around this way to the right. We can just park at the entrance. All right, I'm gonna take the camera over and Yulia's gonna start her shopping. This is exactly what I need. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Now here's the real test. I got two two keys on my bike because I have two two e-bikes and I've got to get the right keys for the right bike. Okay, there we go. How about the backpack? Yeah, we can fit the backpack in there. It's got storage. Yeah, the storage is pretty good. Uh, depending what's in my bag here. Let me just adjust my bag for a second. There it is, that's what was holding the back. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, we're good. All right. This guy's having a good afternoon. Hey, sir. We're coming up on the icon of the city uh, called the Raffle City. And it is a beauty. Trunching is pretty well laid out too. You'll see a lot of the metro stations just over here. The Chow Tiamen, uh station there. This is where a lot of uh, more trade and shops, these are open until about three in the afternoon and then they uh, they shut down and then the food takes over. And this will go all the way until four or five. I even had my local, uh, well I'm not gonna say local, my friends that live locally here for the last few months, they got home at 7 a.m. the other night so I don't know what you can get up to to 7 a.m. in this city, but they did. You want a bargain? This is where you come for bargains. You come down here for bargains. And you know, China, just like every other country, is really going through an online boom as well. Now, yes, I like coming down to shops, trying on shoes, clothes, pots, pans, you know, for the house. But that, a lot of that business is shifting, except in areas like the Chaotimin here in Chongqing it's really staying and it's not moving anywhere. I don't think this business is going to fade out because there's just generations that trust the product here and the price is good. Sure, you can go on Taobao uh, or, you know, the, the Amazon alternatives uh, or Ali, AliExpress, whatever it is, and purchase products, but there's nothing like getting out and actually, you know, negotiating and feeling like you've got uh, a bargain. And you'll see people that are carting luggage up and down the streets. Well, yeah, because this is one of China's most popular cities now uh, for tourism and more photography going on here. Right in the middle of the street. You can see all the way up and down the street, everybody is, is getting that ultimate pose in. And it's a very popular side job for a lot of photographers. Yeah, maybe some foreigners have a different angle and maybe a different way of photography. They should try their talents out down here. Okay, this is interesting. How is this gonna work? Did all that water come from that bike? You see this guy here? He's driving that little bike. You can rent those all throughout town as well. Let's try to get a closer look at him. And you know, if you have your route 
stick to it if you feel relaxed on it. This is a route I feel totally relaxed on. Just taking it easy. Look at this. Look at how beautiful this is. We're heading into Jiang Bay, the financial district, and you can see all the way out into the distance skyscrapers as far as the eye can see. Look at the mountain, and I'm going to show you, they're on the mountain. I can see into the distance there. There's a gold eagle there. We're going to just bolt up to the IFS mall now. And for you guys wondering how fast we're going, we're driving right now at about 40 kilometers an hour. It's a good comfortable speed just to kind of not be surprised by other vehicles. Plenty of parks in this city, right? The one thing I like about this area is very calm. Very, it's kind of a cool place to just kind of take it easy driving to nice restaurants out here. This entire area actually reminds me of Singapore. Yeah. And I gotta tell you, you know, there's a lot of stereotypes about China out there. Just this drive alone should really smash out a lot of these stereotypes. You can really see a lot about how a city functions, how it works, the organization, the cleanliness. There's hardly any graffiti on the buildings here. I mean, it's quite, it's quite a pretty city, but it's well looked after and a lot of people do respect its beauty. This is the Bank of Chongqing. This city prides itself on, you know, keeping its roads looking beautiful. But of course, you're gonna see big names here too. The Balenciagas, the uh, you know, the Gucci's, the Chanel's, the Louis Vuitton's, those are all here too. So if you want to indulge, and of course, five-star hotels that we're just passing, uh, like the Niccolo. Anyway, that's been the journey today, guys. I just want to thank you. It's my time to go in and have a beer now. Thanks, Yulia, for being the awesome co-pilot and a great little purchase today, guys. This is the city of Chongqing, 35 million people, 34.7. That's what I was told, the latest update but an amazing city, a mega city here in Southwest China. Hot summer day, Thursday, Wednesday afternoon, and uh, well, waiting for the light to turn green. We hope you enjoyed this little trip, and there'll be more to come. There'll be more to Chung come. Chung Ching on the road. Chung Ching on the go. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click the like button, share this video throughout all social media. You guys, you're awesome. Take care. All right, bye now.